What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you these five amazing tips for Revit. So I haven't done these videos uh, in a while where I share some really useful tips for Revit. Uh, so well, that's what we're doing today. I have kind of gathered some uh, really cool tips, so I hope you will enjoy these. So I'm going to be showing you first how to create a, a stair that has kind of goes into a V where it basically splits and you have a uh, two stair runs, uh, but I'm not going to do it very simple. I'm going to do it at a weird angle. So you not only have to modify uh, the landing, but you also have to modify each individual run. So I'm just going to be showing you the workflow behind that. Uh, then we're going to jump into the second tip and that is selection options. So uh, whenever you had trouble selecting things that you don't want to select, moving things that you don't want to move, or not being able to select the things that you want to select, well, hopefully this will solve those issues. Uh, then probably the most important tip of this video is going to be the pixelated shadows. So this is something that they find very frustrating. You know what, when Revit gives you those annoying kind of pixelated shadows that look terrible? Well, there's actually a way of fixing that. It's not a perfect solution, but it does tend to get the job done, at least in my experience. So I think it's, it's a tip worth sharing. Uh, then I'm going to be showing you how to place kind of regular doors on a curtain wall. So even though it's not a door that has been modeled as a curtain wall panel, you can actually host it on a curtain wall uh, with a little workaround. So I'm going to be showing you that as well. And then finally, for the fifth and final tip, I'm going to be showing you how to override the view range of your view just in a certain area. So for example, if your view range where it works perfectly fine everywhere else, but just in one area you want to be a little bit different well you can actually uh, kind of override that and I'm just going to be showing you how to do that as well so that's going to be the topic of this video now before I jump into the actual tutorial itself I want to ask you to check out my website balkanarctic.com I'm going to link it up just below this video in the description and then also up in the cards above there you can find all of my Revit courses where I take the extra time to kind of go slowly step by step and explain all of these complex Revit topics in depth. I have over 136 hours of content and I'm adding more each month. So it's very well worth checking out. Uh, also there you can find some of my customized Revit templates. You can find some really, really high quality Revit families as well as a plugin. So you can check that out. Uh, anyways, now without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. And as you can see here, I have just a blank project. I am using Revit 2023. So if you haven't seen uh, my video where I talk about new features of Revit 2023, uh, make sure to check it out by following the link up in the cards above. Anyways, let's start with the first tip and that is the twin stair run. So what does this mean? Well, this means that you have a stair that kind of starts off with a regular kind of straight there, but then it kind of splits into two runs. So how do we do something like that? Kind of splits on top, you know, those kind of fancy staircases that you see at those mansions. Well, this is what we're going to be doing now. So what you want to do is go here to the stair tool. Uh, now I'm just going to go from level one up to level two. I'm going to click uh, here. We can see that we should have something like 20. Yeah, 22 risers. So I'm going to kind of go halfway up uh, at 11. Then I'm going to come to this point perhaps and then go up to like a V shape. I don't know, something like that. And then I'm just going to select this run here and I'm going to use the mirror tool, draw mirror. And then I'm just going to mirror it like this. So this is what that's going to look like. Now you can go to the 3D view and you can see what that looks like. Obviously it looks terrible. Well, at least at this moment. So now let's check out how can we actually uh, fix this. So what you want to do here is you want to double click on this uh, landing and here you can actually convert that into sketch lines and now you can edit the sketch. So now I can go back here into level one and then I can say, okay, so here I want to fix this. So I can use pick uh, lines like that and perhaps this line here as well. And then I can use trim and extend to corner, fix it up like that, like this. So here it's a little bit odd. 
So let's see, can we fix it up like that? There we go. And then this one I want to delete. And there we go. So now this kind of has that correct shape and now I can hit finish. So it's just going to fix that uh, landing here in the middle. Now you also want to fix these runs too. So what you want to do for those is you want to select one of the runs uh, then you want to go here to convert to sketch lines and then once you convert to sketch lines you can go here to edit sketch and now here we can just create a simple line going straight down like this. We can pull this one up, pull this one down and there we go and then I can just hit finish. Okay. And then on the other side, again, do the same thing. So convert, close, edit sketch, and then you can just gonna have that, oops, that straight line here and then fix these up like so, hit finish. And that should look like that. Now here you may have some issues with these uh, uh, stringers, the stair supports, so you can kind of fix that if you want, if you go into edit type. So instead of stringer, let's go to carriage, uh, for example, and that should fix it. For example, yeah, something, uh, so something like that. You can use kind of that approach and it is going to uh, give you that solution. And there we go. Uh, this works uh, even better in my experience uh, if you're using like a, a monolithic stair, it's just going to look uh, much better. See how everything kind of uh, fits in perfectly. And then you can hit finish and there we go. So now we're going to have one additional issue here with the railing. So what I have noticed is you just want to delete that original railing. You want to go here into level one and then you want to select one of the railings, find the offset, control C to copy that offset, uh, then go to railing here, uh, go to pick lines, select this one, give it that offset here and then hit finish. So there we go. We have one of them and then you can just mirror it to the other side like so. And then you can go to the 3D view. You can select these two. Let's see. Okay. Like that. Oops. We have to do one at, one at a time. So you select this one. You go to pick new host. You will select the stair. You select this one. You go to pick new host. You select the stair. And now, as you can see, we have that perfect railing and we have that V shaped stair uh, with a little overlap here with that kind of complicated landing in the middle. And it turned out really, really good. Okay, now we're going to be talking about some of the selection options. So on your uh, screen here on the modify button, now you have the modify button on the architecture tab, the structure tab, I think even the steel tab and systems and so on. Uh, so here on this tab, uh, you will see or on this button, you will see that below we have this select option and it has this little arrow indicating that there is a drop menu below that. Now that's also something useful to know wherever you see these little arrows, that means that there is a drop menu that you can check out kind of below uh, that panel. So anyways, let's go back here. Let's click here. And here we have some selection options, which you can use in order to make your life easier when it comes to selecting items in Revit. So let's start from the bottom up. So let's go here to drag elements on selection. So basically what this means is when you highlight an element, when you click hold and then drag, it's essentially going to act in as a move tool. So it's going to move that element. Uh, now this can be really annoying in some cases. Well, in a lot of cases, usually when you move elements, you want to be kind of precise about it. So what you can do is you can just uncheck that. See, and now when I click hold and drag, basically nothing happens. I start making like a select a cross selection. So basically you can kind of turn that off. Then the next one is select elements by face. So what this basically means is if I zoom in here to this stair or let's go to the bottom of the stair. Okay. If I come to the kind of the line here, the edge, it's going to highlight. However, if I click just on the face, nothing really happens. I have to come to the edge. I have to select a line and then it selects the element. However, if you change this to select elements by face and you check this on, now, as long as you're hovering over any of the faces of that element, it's going to allow you to select that element. So that's another useful thing that you might want to have turned on or off. I prefer to have it off, but 
you do what uh, what you think is best. Next, we have select pinned elements. Now, this is really useful in cases where you want to perhaps make sure that some elements are not selected. So for example, let's say I don't want these levels to be selected when I make my cross selections. I can simply select them. I can pin them by using the pin uh, button here. There we go. And now they're pinned in place. Now I can still select them. However, if I were to go here and uncheck select pinned elements, now I can no longer select those uh, pinned elements, in this in this case, those levels. So this can be really useful. For example, I like to pin my grids when I'm making a, a model and, and then I check this off and then I can no longer select those elements. And then when I do want to select them, I just check this on and then you can make changes. So I think this is a, a really useful panel. Uh, next we have the underlay elements. This basically means is if I go to level one and let's place something here, so like this desk. And then if I go to level two, uh, this is basically now an underlay element. So if I were to check this on, select underlay elements, I should be able, there we go. I, I should be able to select that element. Now it is interesting that when you make a cross selection, it's not going to select that element. You have to kind of purposely click on that element uh, to select it. It's not going to select like this. I don't think it will, no. I guess it doesn't. So you actually have to kind of purposely go in and select that element, which is another interesting behavior. I think it's good sometimes you want to change elements in underlay, but again, you don't want to kind of mess up your model when you're making broad changes. So anyways, you can check that off. And then finally, we have select links. So if you load in a link and you don't want to mess with it anymore, you can just uncheck this select links. So as long as this is checked off, that link will no longer, you will no longer be able to select that link just like this underlay element right now. Now let's talk about probably the uh, most important tip of today's video and that is uh, pixelated broken shadows. So here I have this kind of sample model and if I zoom in you can see that the shadows are kind of breaking and they look horrific. Uh, as you can see they're kind of just pixelated just a bunch of squares and it looks weird and I really don't like this. Uh, sometimes this can even happen when you export. Uh, it's rare, rare, a lot more rare than when you see it in the model, but it can happen. And I find this really, really annoying. Just but when I'm working, I just I just don't like to, to see shadows like this. Uh, now, there isn't really kind of a definite solution how to fix this, uh, but what I have uh, seen on some forums, what people have been doing, and it does seem to be a solution, is to go here to the file menu, then open up the options, and then go to hardware. Now here on the hardware settings, you have this use hardware acceleration, direct 3D, whatever. And then if you just uncheck that and click OK, let's click OK here again, uh, you do have to close up your project and let's not save the changes. And then when you open that project up again, uh, we should not see uh, that issue, or at least it should be a lot less. So here, if I spin this around, let's turn on the shadows. Yeah, it seems to be working now and we don't have those ugly broken up shadows. So that's uh, that's one option. So I'm, I'm guessing it does slow things down a little bit because that was some sort of like acceleration. So I, I'm guessing there is like a performance trade off. Uh, but I think overall, uh, if you are annoyed with those shadows, it is a uh, it is a solution. So it's really up to you. When uh, do you want to use it and do you want to use it? Okay, so for the next step, I'm going to be showing you how to place regular wall uh, doors on curtain walls. So here, if I go to the wall tool and let me place just a generic wall here and then let's place a, a curtain wall in front of that. So this is storefront curtain wall, just like that. Okay, so if I now go to the 3D view, uh, what you'll see here is, okay, this is up on the higher level, that's okay. Uh, we can bring it down to level one. Okay, so if I were to go to the door tool, and if I want to place a door, I can place it on a regular wall. But if I try to place it on a curtain wall, it's not just it's just not going to allow me to do that. Uh, you actually have to model your doors as curtain wall panels in order to place them on curtain walls. Uh, the same thing goes with windows, uh, it's just not going to place it on the curtain wall 
too. And the solution is same both for doors and for windows. Uh, what you want to do first is make sure you kind of uh, adjust the size of the panel or of, of one individual panel to be kind of the size of the uh, door that you want to place there. And then what you want to do is hit the tab key a few times until you highlight the panel itself. You can select it and then you can unpin it here. And then you can either find like a curtain wall door, uh, but in this case, because I don't have that, what I can do is I can just place a, a regular wall segment. So I can place like a 90 centimeter brick wall there. See, so it's just instead of a glass panel, it has a brick wall. And now if I go to the door tool, I can actually place a door on that brick wall and it's going to, well, it's going to work there. Same thing goes for a window. So if I wanted to place a window, it will allow me to place that window there. So there we go. So that's kind of an override. Uh, I don't recommend you do this often. This is just some kind of in crucial situations when you do have a door that you would like to use and you don't have the extra time to kind of go through the, the process of creating a curtain uh, panel family with that same door. So if you don't want to do that, yeah, this, uh, this is a, a good solution uh, for, for something like that. And then finally, for the last step, let me show you the area plan. So I'm just going to use the same model. Let me see how tall is this. So this is a 240 centimeters. Okay, that will work. So what I'm going to do is take this window and make it just one of those smallest ones, something like this, and then I'm going to place it all the way up here at the top. Now, when I go to my level one floor plan, and if I zoom in here, you will see I see that wall segment and I can select the window itself, but I don't see that window. Now, in some cases, uh, you might see this in situations where you have windows that are a little bit uh, higher. Uh, usually you would see this, this with bathroom windows, things like that, where the window is kind of close to the ceiling and you just have that kind of ambient light on top. Uh, so if you have a situation such as that and you do want to display that window, but you cannot because of the uh, just because of the view range settings. So here, if I go to the view range, uh, the view range is set at 1200 millimeters, so 1.2 meters. Usually for the rest of the model, you want to keep that uh, cut plane at that level or at that height. But for this specific area, we would like to have it a little bit higher. So you can actually override your cut plane in just a certain area uh, simply by going here to plan views and find your plan region. Uh, so the plan region allows you to just kind of select a certain region such as this. Uh, select it like that and then basically it's just green dashed lines and then when you select that planned region you can go here and you have this view range option you go into edit uh, and then here I can simply set the uh, cut plane to be instead of 1.2 meters perhaps 1 point or 2 meters or 2000 millimeters hit apply okay and now as you can see it will show that uh, opening here in this uh, in this plan view. See, now it shows that opening, whereas before it didn't. And if I move this, as you can see, it no longer shows that opening. So it's kind of like a, a whole view in inside. So I think it's a, it's a really cool option that we have. So there we go. Uh, those are uh, kind of the, the tips and tricks for today. I, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Tell me in the comment section below, have you learned something new and did you enjoy this video? Uh, if you get, want to get my Revit project files, you can find those on my Patreon page. I'm going to include a link just below this video in the description and then also up in the cards above. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe uh, for more videos and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.